If you've been watching Chelsea over the past two seasons, there's a pattern they find themselves in week in, week out. No matter the billions spent on new players, the four different managers within a year, and whatever the project is, teams have figured out that Chelsea have no idea how to break a low block, and will happily park the bus, and watch as Chelsea pass the ball from side to side, and spam hopeful crosses into the box. This obviously isn't working. Last season, Chelsea scored 38 goals, their worst record in 99 years. And with very similar difficulties at the start of the new season, any optimism from the fans at the brand new starting 11 is very quickly fading away. So why are Chelsea so bad at breaking the low block? And how do teams like Man City make little work of it? Let's take a look. Welcome back to Football Meta. As a reminder, all the stats in this video are brought to you by Soccerman's brand new X-Value platform, with in-depth metrics from 17 different leagues across the globe. You can now get 25% off yearly subscriptions by using code FOOTBALLMETA at checkout. By starting a free trial, you also get access to the Football Analytics Handbook, a free PDF with some more insight into the advanced metrics that are changing the way we look at football. Click the link in the description down below to get started. It would be unfair of us to judge Pochettino on his underwhelming start at Chelsea. Trying to find a consistent starting 11 and find suitable roles for all of their expensive new signings is definitely no easy task and it will take time for the players to understand Poch's requirements. But time, unlike money, is something Chelsea aren't willing to spend. And if Poch can't find a solution quickly, then what happens next is anyone's guess. But regardless of the manager, the low block has been an issue for Chelsea for the past few seasons, and will consistently drop points against teams that sit back and hit them on the counter-attack. Even when looking at the statistics, it's hard to pinpoint an exact reason, and there isn't much of a difference between teams like Man City and Chelsea. For example, in this scatter plot, we consider a team's field tilt, which is the percentage of passes and touches in the opposition's final third, and the team's touches in the opposition's box per 90. This gives us a good indication of which teams hold onto the ball a lot in the opposition's third, and which teams sit back and wait for their chance to strike. Notice how Chelsea have already lost twice to two teams on this side of the graph, highlighting their difficulty in beating the low block. But when looking at Chelsea specifically, they actually rank significantly higher than Man City for touches in the opposition's box. By switching the touches in the box for average XG per shot, Chelsea and Man City are very similar, showing how both teams are able to create chances from similar areas. But the biggest difference in quality emerges when looking at shot accuracy. So far this season, Chelsea have a shot accuracy of 26.9%, ranking 18th in the league while Man City are doing much better at 38.2%. We can understand this difference in more detail by comparing the two strikers in Erling Haaland and Nicholas Jackson. Both players are similar for non-penalty XG per 90, but while Erling Haaland has 5 goals, Jackson has 1. This is also reflected in both players shooting goals added, a metric that tells us the increased chance of scoring based on shot execution, meaning the better the shot, the higher the SGA score. While Jackson has an average of 0.12, placing him in the 56th percentile, Haaland scores 0.45, in the top 72% of players. These stats show us that as of now, Nicholas Jackson is underperforming, and while he does get himself into very good positions, his shot quality is letting him down. While he is young and so the data sample isn't huge, his previous season result of 12 goals from an XG of 7.7 .7 suggests his shot quality should start to pick up throughout the season and could be a turning point for Chelsea. But stick around to the end of the video as there might be another reason to this underperformance. Now, this isn't the only reason why Chelsea are struggling in front of goal, and it also comes down to a difference in playstyle between the two teams. Firstly, let's look at both teams' structure in the final third. While Chelsea line up with a 3-4-2-1, their offensive structure is much more resemblant of a 4-2-3-1, with Colwell and Malo Gusto acting as the fullbacks with Caicedo and Gallagher forming a double pivot in the centre. This means that when entering the opposition's half, Chelsea have six players active during build-up, and four players further up on the defensive line. We can see that here in this clip, the back four, the double pivot, and the front four. This is already a slightly different structure to Man City, as their 3-2-5 shape means they instantly have an extra player in attack, and use one less player during build-up. Here's a screenshot of this 3-2-5 shape. If you want to know more about this style of play, then check out this video on the WM and all the advantages that it brings. 
With Chelsea as they gain ground, Malo Gusto will push up on the back line forming a front five and adopting a similar shape to what we see with Man City. But the way this front five is created is slightly different and leads to a few different scenarios. While Man City's front five is with Haaland in the center, two players in the half spaces and the wingers out wide in the shape of a W, Chelsea's front five is formed of the front two of Jackson and Sterling, Malo Gusto and Chilwell out wide and Fernandez between the lines. As a result, Chelsea's positioning is often much more flat on the defensive line, with much less support between the lines. This is also exaggerated by the fact that Fernandez wants to be on the ball as much as possible, and if he isn't receiving passes between the lines, he often drops deep to receive the ball from the midfielders, vacating this space and making it much harder to progress. We can see this perfectly in this clip here against Nottingham Forest. As Chelsea rotate from left to right, Fernandez has dropped deep to receive the ball. This means as the ball goes out wide to Malagusto, he has no support around him, and Forest's midfield is doing an excellent job at splitting Chelsea's attack in half, as the front four is up against the back five and the midfield three are behind the midfield. This gives Malagusto few options and is dispossessed after attempting a dribble. We can get another good example of this flat shape by looking at this clip against West Ham. Again, as Chelsea rotate from flank to flank, their attacking line is completely flat against West Ham's defenders, with no staggered position between the lines, meaning they are not forcing any West Ham players to make a choice, and it's easy for them to follow their man. With Fernandes and Gallagher not connecting defence and attack, you again end up with this split down the middle, and Chelsea aren't outnumbering the defence and are not creating any issues for West Ham. Let's now compare this shape to what we see with Man City. Here's a quick example of their shape against Fulham, the 3-2 build-up structure, and the front five. But notice how only Haaland is pressed up against the back line, pushing them back because of this threat of a ball over the top while the other four players are occupying the space between the lines. This slightly more staggered shape causes a lot of issues for the back line, as they have further to travel to put pressure on the opposing player, meaning they need to step off their line and make a choice. For example, if Walker passes the ball out wide, it creates a gap for a run into the half space. If Walker passes it into the center, it frees up space in behind. This shape means Man City can attack anywhere they want and is much more balanced than unpredictable, as at any moment they could move either centrally or out wide. This is reflected in their attacking zones, with their preferred attacking routes being balanced between left, centre and right, while Chelsea on the other hand are much more imbalanced to the right flank. While both teams objective is to form a front five in the final third, Man City's way of creating this shape is much more intuitive, as they have their key players in all of these areas. Chelsea on the other hand rotate their position a lot more frequently, with Jackson often dropping deep and Fernandez pushing up, Sterling moving out wide and Gusto moving centrally. There's a lot more moving parts in this Chelsea team, and given that the whole team is only now starting to get to know each other, there could be some growing pains they need to get through before they can fully take advantage of these movements. Quick side note, I found it interesting how Chelsea looked more dangerous against Nottingham Forest when Palmer came on off the bench and his positioning was much more resemblant of what you would expect from a player developed under Guardiola, often sitting in this square between the fullback, centre-back and midfield line, creating gaps for Chelsea's other players to exploit. But other than these slight structural differences, another very important difference is what players are forming the front five. When looking at Chelsea, their front five is formed with the fullbacks out wide, the striker and the inside forward in the centre, and one box-to-box -box midfielder. Man City, on the other hand, have their wingers out wide, the box-to-box -box midfielders in the half spaces, and the target man up top. With Chelsea relying on their fullbacks for width, it means they have a right-footed player on the right with Malagusto and a left-footed player on the left with Ben Chilwell. As a result, these players are much more inclined to push forward and deliver outswinging crosses into the box. This type of delivery can be very effective if executed early as it splits the defence from the goalkeeper and the striker usually has a clear sight of goal. But against the low block, this type of delivery is much harder to pull off, given that once the team is in position, the defending team has time to set up and block the key areas around the 6-yard box, and the cross will need to be exactly right in order to create a chance. With Man City, the main difference is that the width is given by the inverted wingers, meaning they have a left-footed player on the right and a right-footed player on the left. 
or generally speaking, even if the wingers aren't inverted, they are all excellent dribblers and excel with both feet. This means that the defending fullback is always unsure which direction they're going to go. They can cut inside much more frequently and link up with the midfielders on the edge of the box, or dribble past on the outside and look for cutbacks. Even when Man City are looking to cross the ball, it is rarely from these areas out wide, but is much more frequently coming from this space on the edge of the box, looking for Haaland on the second post. Delivery from this area is difficult to stop, as it goes over the defending line which will need to run backwards in order to intercept it. The fact that Chilwell and Malagusto are not very good dribblers means that Chelsea's attacks can very quickly become predictable, and it's much easier for the opposition to stop any threats coming from out wide. This reliance on crosses is reflected in the statistics. So far this season, Chelsea ranked first for crosses per match at 28.5, much more than Man City. They also complete a lot more cutbacks, showing their reliance on reaching the touchline before passing it centrally. However, Man City reflect this central progression more clearly, completing the most through balls in the league. Essentially, these stats tell us how Chelsea are trying to go round the central block, while Man City look to cut straight through it. Finally, by going back to our Jackson v Haaland comparison, this could be the reason why Jackson is underperforming compared to the City striker. While they both occupy good positions and take chances from similar areas, the chances falling for Jackson are definitely not as clean, often coming from deflected crosses or driven balls which are harder to finish. With Haaland, Man City are able to consistently find him in space in front of goal. While Chelsea's start to the season has been worrying, the numbers show us that they are still creating chances and are able to get the ball into dangerous areas. So with some more patience and understanding between the players, their league form should, in theory, start to pick up. But do you think it will? And what do you make of this Chelsea team? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out this video on West Ham and how they've mastered the art of the low block. As always, if you enjoy this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.